link those two things together and you get, of course, people very often mistaking random patterns for real patterns. For example, Tristan Woodray, or may not depict our lady, is causing quite a stir in County Lake. The people of Mount Keel seem determined to prevent it from being destroyed. To some, it may look like the stump of a tree. To others, it's a religious image. A steady stream of people pass through the gates of St. Mary's Church in Rath Keel again today. Since Monday, hundreds from Limerick and the surrounding counties have arrived to view a tree stump, which people believe depicts an image of the Blessed Virgin. You're a local man here. What do you think of it? Oh, it's just magnificent. Just, just something different. It's about time something nice happened in the town. It's drawn off and be crowd so it should be left there. What do you see when you look at us? I see the passive vision of our lady. That's me, Henry. That's my question. And do you think it should be left there? I think it should. Definitely not moved. I see our lady there. One million percent you can see our lady. I mean, you, you, can't, you can't describe the likes of that. News of the image spread quickly. In the cutting of the tree, it just happened to come across the image of a lady. And on further examination of it, um, they came to the conclusion that it is that of uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Hundreds here last night, up to, uh, at one stage, I would say, maybe four or five hundred people. More than 2,000 members of the community have signed a petition calling for the church to leave the remainder of the tree in place. Autism package is left here. You can look at it, bring the people into the church. Which do you want to go to church? I was here at one o'clock. There's a gigantic crowd here. It's just beautiful to look at the night. What kind of an atmosphere was there last night? Emotional. It was beautiful. A 24 hour vigil is being held at the tree so that no vandalism can take place. The people of Rathkeel are now calling for dialogue between the church and the parish so that the tree can be made a permanent fixture. Ashley McCushlet, TV3 News, Rathkeel, County Limerick. Okay, but it's not, apparently, just uh, religious people that, that make this mistake. Helen, get in here! Oh, um, finally! After all these years of doubt! saw in the first clip um, and it was, uh, it was a clear example of uh, a form of apophenia known as paradolia, which refers to particularly visual or auditory uh, perceptions. You know, we're seeing faces in clouds and things like that, um, or in a tree stump. But other, I want to talk about two other kinds of apophenia now, which are, I think, more relevant to uh, understanding why religion is such a, a powerful tendency in humans, particularly 
what are called hyperactive agency detectors and <coughs> hyperactive causation detectors. Hyperact by hyperactive agency detectors, uh, I, I mean that there's some kind of, we all have uh, cognitive mechanisms for picking out, distinguishing between things that have agency and things that don't. So things that have some th living things and non-living things, if you like. It's a very important distinction for any animal to make, and evolution seems to have favored their uh, development in many species, and particularly humans. Some of the evidence for this uh, is that um, we, it, we, we tend to look for this distinction in even the most basic of stimuli. And some interesting experiments by Tremolo and Feldman in the year 2000 they produced uh, various computer-generated uh, images of just dots moving around on the screen. Some dots were purely random movements, and some dots were controlled by someone to make it you know, look as if they were chasing something. And then they asked people to um, tell, ask, say if any of the dots had intentions, and merely the movement pattern of some dots was enough to make some people clearly see the intentionality behind that movement. So they could see those dots, those moving dots, some of those as having intentions and some of them as not. They could distinguish the random behavior from the non-random behavior in, in all they could, and they projected that, or they interpreted those non-random dots as having some kind of intention. Interestingly, when they did the same experiment with autistic children, there was they were no better than chance at making that distinction. So there does seem to, this does seem to be related to uh, the, the fact that autistic children seem to lack what cognitive psychologists refer to as a theory of mind. They don't seem to have the folk psychology that most of us just naturally acquire as children or develop naturally as children, uh, which enable us to interpret the, the sum of beings in the world around us as having thoughts, feelings, desires, and intentions. Uh, which makes those beings different from rocks and stones and things that don't have such intentions. For autistic children, everything is really just mechanics. Now, the interesting question is what if we tend to over-perceive, if we make, no, that, again, we're faced with this distinction, this question, do we tend to, we, we're not going to get this absolutely right. We're not going to always pick out no system is going to be absolutely correct, uh, always distinguishing agents from non-agents. So it's probably a good idea to bias your errors towards one or the other type, type one or type two. Again, natural selection seems to have biased our brains towards the type one error here. That is, to we're more likely to perceive agency where there is none than to perceive no, no agency where there in fact is agency. So we have, that's what I mean by hyperactive agency detectors. They're kind of on the lookout for any signs of agency and they'll jump to the conclusion that there is some kind of agency there. If there's any possibility of making that, um, they won't tend to uh, miss it at all. They'll, and that, for obvious reasons, again, you, it's much probably more costly in evolutionary terms to mistake uh, a person for a tree than it is to make, mistake a tree for a person. Okay. And this you could, uh, is probably what underlies our ordinary, everyday animism. And what I mean by that is our tendency, for example, to kick our, ca our, com our car when it's not working, to shout at our computers, and so on. Now, on some level, we all know that that's silly. But the fact that we so readily do it suggests that even people who are clearly aware that these computers are not alive can't help, at some level, treating them often as if they are even if it's just as a joke, and which may be due to a more powerful force, which if we're not maybe so well, uh, so critical, we might take as actual evidence that these things are alive, and which may underlie a lot of our original tendencies to attribute spirits to rivers, and mountains, and so on. So I think this may be one of the forces, one of the cognitive forces, if you like, which makes it easy for us to believe in religious ideas. 
because we tend to perceive agents, we tend to prefer explanations in terms of intentions, desires, and to attribute those to things that don't have them. <coughs> that may ha be, be partly what explains the origin of some religious ideas whenever they started way back. And it would also explain why those religious ideas are so easy to transmit to, from one generation to another. Another kind of apophenia is, this, uh, is a similar to the hyperactive agency detector, but here is the hyperactive causation detector. And uh, I think uh, I can best explain what I mean by that by reference to some experiments that um, Skinner did in the, uh, the, the uh, Skinner, the, behavior, the behaviorist, with some pigeons, which Dawkins, Richard Dawkins explains here in this. Uh, All wild animals have to be kind of natural statisticians looking for 